Okay, in this tutorial we're going to talk about setting up wireless networking for the CCNA using Packet Tracer. So in this scenario what we've got is we have let's say um, the internet over here connected to our router and our organization and we've got a network on the inside, right? So here is the ISP's public network out here. And inside we've got our private network and we're running a 192.168.1 network, right? And you can see here that, let's say we've got a, a router hooked up to a switch, and let's pretend that, let's say, we've got some, some clients on our private network here, right? So we've got some, we have some clients, let's say, attached to the switch, right? So we'll say, okay, so these clients are attached to the switch, and, you know, that's great, all right? So here's our private network, the one network, but we want to be able to have wireless clients. Let's say some people have some laptops or we have some places that we don't read the switch doesn't reach and we want to add additional an additional wireless network to our um, internal network on our organization. So what we want to do is we want to have a different network down here, a special wireless network. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a wireless device. We'll get a Linksys wireless router and we're going to hook this Linksys wireless router up to our one network and the wireless router has basically two sides to it it's got essentially the WAN side which connects to the let's say the internet right and on the other side it has the LAN side where it hands out IP addresses on the LAN side uh, to wireless clients and it might also have a few switch ports that can also function on the LAN side. So the wireless router has basically, uh, we'll say two interfaces, the WAN side and the LAN side. But that LAN side is actually wireless clients and a few switch ports. So anyway, um, so we're going to hook up this wireless router to the network on the WAN side to start with. So what we'll do is we'll say we're going to connect it from the router to the switch with a crossover cable in this case, so we'll say to the internet port, which is the WAN port, and we'll hook it to the switch here on Fast Ethernet 2, right? So now we've hooked up this wireless router to the network. Now, we need to give it, since this is going to be a device that um, doesn't change, is always the same, we're going to need to give it a static address on the WAN side, right? So on the WAN side, we're going to give it this IP address right here. We'll say we're going to make it 1.2 which makes sense since the router here is 1.1 then we'll make it 1.2 right and then these clients are probably well they're they're also on the one network but we don't know their IP addresses right so the wireless router we're gonna make 1.2 now this is different than if we had a scenario like this where a scenario like this where we had let's say a modem right the internet our ISP gives us let's say a DSL modem and so we've got this DSL modem and then we connect from our DSL modem to our wireless router in this case on the WAN side our um, wireless router would pick up an IP address from the DSL modem and from our ISP automatically so on the WAN side we'd automatically get an IP address using DHCP on the WAN side right but this would be if we were connecting this wireless router to let's say a modem it could be a cable modem or a DSL modem or something like that right but that's not what's happening in this scenario in this scenario we're adding this wireless router to our internal network so we're gonna statically assign the IP address right here alright so I'm gonna delete these just wanted to use those for an example alright and then on the um, LAN side of our network what we want to do is we're going to have a wireless network for wireless users and we're going to make it let's say the 2.0 wireless network and we're going to need to make the router on this LAN side 2.1 and then he will hand out addresses let's say he'll hand out addresses 192.168.2.1 100 and he'll hand it out till 149 right using DHCP so it's going to function as a DHCP server also handing out IP addresses on this private network right 
So let's configure this up. Now, if we've attached this wireless router to the network, let's pretend like we are going to configure it for the first time as if this was a real Linksys wireless access point, right? So even though this is the goal and we want to do this, these Linksys wireless access points don't come um, configured that way by default. By default, these wireless access points on the LAN side over here, by default, it's going to have an IP address already built into it of 192.168.0.1 and by default it's going to be running a DHCP server and handing out addresses 192.168.0.100-149 so this is by default right so by default this is what it's doing okay and not only that it's broadcasting all of this, right, so that it'll be easy to configure the first time. So it's broadcasting its SSID, in this case, as the word default, right? So it's broadcasting the service set identifier as default. And what this means is all we have to do is get a wireless client out here and we'll automatically associate with this wireless access point or this wireless router and then we'll be able to configure it and change its settings so that we can change its WAN internet port to 1.2 and we can change its LAN port to 2.1 and change it so that it's handing out addresses on this 2 network. So the first time we use it we're gonna have to though connect to it with its default settings. So to do that what we'll do is we'll bring out a custom made device. If you click down here you can get custom made devices and there's a generic PC with a built-in wireless card. So we'll bring that guy out and he's got a wireless card built in and by default you can see that instantly it just associated with the Linksys wireless router and it's probably picked up an address of 192.168.0.100 since that's the default IP address of this Linksys wireless router is 0.1 and it probably handed it out an IP address. So let's do that and then configure this Linksys wireless router just like we would if we were doing it for the first time. Okay, so we open up our client and remember also this client we need to have installed let's say the wireless utility or the wireless software that comes packaged with this wireless router. So this wireless router is going to give you some Linksys software utilities that you can use to help configure it, right? And so this this PC client right here has those installed by default also and that will help. So we'll click on it, right? And so now we're in our PC and we'll go to desktop, right? And we'll see if we can connect and manage our wireless router through our web browser. So we'll click our web browser, right? And or even before we do that, we can open up let's say our Linksys wireless utility to see if we've um, connected to it. And it says here right away when we open up our little wireless utility that the Linksys wireless router we've successfully connected to the access point right link quality signal strength right the adapter is active and if we look at um, connect right or and we'll hit refresh there it is the wireless network name default we said the SSID by default the service set identifier that we connected to is default and you can see on channel 1 signal strength 100 we can see that it's a mixed network of uh, 802.11b, g, and n, right? The wireless mode is infrastructure, which is a uh, basically an access point or wireless router uh, server mode. And, and that's it. Security is disabled, so it enabled us to connect to it automatically. If we wanted to, we could connect to it or refresh, but we're already connected. And if we go to profiles, we can see that this default profile is there um, and we've picked it up by default right so let's see if we can manage it so we'll open up the web browser and we'll put the IP address the default IP address of the Linksys access point in there which is 192.168.0.1 and we'll hit enter and instantly you can see that the Linksys access point opens up an authorization um, panel saying, hey, we need a username and password if you want to manage this Linksys wireless router. So we'll t put in the defaults, which are admin admin by default on Linksys wireless routers. 
and you can see that that puts us into the management browser utility here okay so now this is the management GUI interface that you can use to manage a Linksys wireless router and the real one looks a lot like this in fact it looks just like this and so what we want to do is we want to now configure our Linksys wireless router so that the internet or WAN port is 192.168.1.2 and we're going to configure it as a static address and then we're going to configure the DHCP server to hand out addresses 2.100 to 149 and we're going to set the IP address of the wireless router to um, 2.1 now this is going to be interesting because right now it's not doing that it's set to defaults which are 0 0.1 and it's handing out 0 0.100 so as we change and configure this wireless router we're gonna get disconnected from it a couple of times and then we're gonna to have to reconnect to it because as we change it right we're going to get disconnected because our IP address will no longer be on the local network that it's handing out so but it, it, this is exactly how you would do it if in a real-world scenario